This past cycle, 49,118 students submitted applications to Cornell University. 5,183 of them were accepted, which resulted in an acceptance rate of 10.6%. It's no secret that it has become increasingly competitive to get into college, especially the Ivies. And many students are left wondering, how do they get in? Hi, I'm Brian Weintraub, and I'm a member of the Cornell University Class of 2021. At College Vine, I work as a research and development intern to build on our products and develop new curriculum. This past year, we helped 40 students gain acceptance to Cornell. If you're interested in getting into Cornell, continue watching this video to learn more about the requirements, academics, extracurriculars, essays, and more. Before we dive into the details of what it takes to get into Cornell University, I want to talk a little bit about the mission of Cornell. Cornell is both the largest and the youngest of the eight Ivy League institutions. It was founded in 1865 by two New York State Senators, Ezra Cornell and A.D. White. Cornell is composed of seven undergraduate colleges, encompassing over 80 majors, with topics ranging from fiber science and apparel design, to biomedical engineering, to government and urban planning, and to my personal field of study, hotel administration. There are four key components that Cornell admissions officers look for when reviewing an application. Intellectual potential, character, involvement, and a strong reason for wanting to attend the school. Although it can be assumed to be something very important at all schools, fit with Cornell is especially important. Keep this in mind as you're going through the application. The first step in applying to Cornell is deciding which college or school you're going to apply to. These include the College of Human Ecology, the College of Agriculture and Life Sciences, the School of Industrial and Labor Relations, the Dyson School of Applied Economics and Management, the College of Engineering, the College of Arts and Sciences, the College of Art, Architecture, and Planning, and lastly, the School of Hotel Administration. Something also worth mentioning is that part of Cornell is actually a state school. That means that residents of New York pay discounted tuition at each of the four contract colleges. These include the College of Human Ecology, the College of Agriculture and Life Sciences, the School of Industrial and Labor Relations, and the Dyson School of Applied Economics and Management. On a separate note, the Dyson School is actually the most competitive at Cornell, with an acceptance rate under 3%. There are two applications you can use when applying to Cornell, the Common App or the Universal College application. Here at College Vine, we recommend that you use the Common application because it's accepted at hundreds of different schools throughout the country, which means less work for you. After you figure out which school you'll be applying to, the next decision is when to apply. Cornell offers two decision rounds, early decision and regular decision. Early decision applications are due on November 1st, and you'll receive your decision in mid-December. However, early decision is binding, which means that if you're accepted to Cornell during the early decision round, you will be required to attend. If you're deferred, your application will be moved into the regular decision pool of applicants, and if you were accepted during regular decision, you will not be required to attend. Regular decision applications are due by January 2nd, and you will be notified in late March on the common Ivy League decision day. By applying early decision, you indicate to Cornell that you are 100% committed to attending the university. Not only is the acceptance rate higher for early decision than regular decision, but applying early decision can give someone with a less than stellar profile a better chance of being accepted to Cornell. This means that if you are really passionate about Cornell, applying early decision is the right choice for you. Like most schools, Cornell requires you to submit a number of academic forms with your application. This includes your transcript, two letters of recommendation from high school teachers, a counselor recommendation, and a mid-year report. You can find out more about these requirements on the Cornell website. Now that you know the general requirements of a Cornell application, let's get into academics and standardized tests. When it comes to your transcript, Cornell is looking at two things. How rigorous is your schedule and how strong are your grades? Academics typically make up about 30% of an admissions decision, and that's pretty standard across all schools, not just Cornell. Students often ask us if their academic profile is strong enough to get them into a specific school. Colleges want to see that you are taking advantage of what your school offers. For example, if your school offers 16 AP classes and you've only taken five, that's a lot less impressive than a student whose school offers four AP classes, took three of them, and took another test through independent study. This also applies to grades. Getting an A- in an AP course is actually more impressive than getting an A in a standard level course. 
Don't be afraid to challenge yourself academically. The risk is worth the reward. Cornell also considers an applicant's standardized test scores. Applicants with higher scores will have a better chance of being accepted. You can see if you're on track to be accepted to Cornell by looking at the average scores of students who have already been accepted. The average unweighted high school GPA of an accepted Cornell student is a 3.9 out of 4. The middle 50 range of SAT scores for an accepted student is a 1410 to a 1520 out of 1600. Lastly, the middle 50 scores for the ACT are 32 to 34 out of 36. Some other important things to keep in mind about Cornell's requirements are that the writing section for the SAT and the ACT are not required. SAT results will be super scored, which means that your highest verbal and math sections will be combined to create a composite score. This is actually really helpful because it means that if you take the SAT more than once, only your highest scores from each section will be considered. Some schools at Cornell do require you to submit SAT2 subject tests. For more information on that, check out Cornell's website. Since most applicants to top colleges are strong academically, you need a way to differentiate yourself from the pack. Extracurriculars are a great way to do this. At CollegeVine, we use a tiering system to rank a student's activities. The system ranks extracurriculars on a scale of impressiveness. When we talk about impressiveness, we mean dedication, leadership, and involvement. The tiers range from one to four, with one being the highest. Applicants to top schools like Cornell typically hold one to two tier one activities, two to three tier two activities, and a few remaining tier three or four activities. Tier four activities involve general membership and limited involvement in a club, organization, or team. Think of activities like being an extra in a school play, intramural sports, or going to a weekly meeting of a fundraising club. Most, if not every student in a graduating class holds some tier four activities. Tier three activities are those that indicate dedicated involvement in a club, team, or organization with a possible small distinction. Being on the mock trial, model UN, or robotics team, as well as playing on the varsity tennis team are all examples of a tier three activity. Many involved students in a graduating class hold multiple tier three activities. Tier two activities are ones with a dedicated leadership position or a demonstrable achievement or distinction. For example, being the captain or state champion of the varsity track team or on the executive board of a major club. Only a select few students in a graduating class will hold multiple Tier 2 activities. Tier 1 activities involve rare or superior leadership, likely to be an activity that's unique to a single applicant in the entire applicant pool. For example, when I was in high school, I founded and managed a real school store. This is a great example of a Tier 1 activity because it combines not only leadership, but the initiative to start a new organization and see it through. You should use the activities section to highlight things that are important to you. This is a great way to make admissions officers stop and say, wow, that's something that really distinguishes this student from any other student. Extracurricular activities are also a great way to help build out your admissions theme, which we'll get into a little bit more later. The next thing I want to talk about are essays. Typically, essays make up about 25 to 30% of your admissions decision. What's really important about your essays is that they are the opportunity to show the admissions officers who you are outside of your extracurriculars, your grades, and everything else that's just on paper. In addition to your personal statement, you will need to write a supplemental essay for Cornell, which is dependent on the college or school that you are applying to. Each school has a separate application prompt. These prompts can be found on the Cornell website. To learn more, visit the link below. I want to take this opportunity to share my experience while writing the supplemental essay for Cornell. I'm currently in the School of Hotel Administration studying business and hospitality management. The global hospitality industry includes hotel and food service management, real estate, finance, entrepreneurship, marketing, law, and technology. Describe what has influenced your decision to study business through the lens of hospitality. What personal qualities make you a good fit for the School of Hotel Administration? At the hotel school, one of the most important aspects of an applicant is having work experience in the hospitality industry. In my class, the class of 2021, 82% of accepted students had previously worked in the hospitality industry. 
This essay is a great place to highlight your experience and make a claim for why you belong at the hotel school. Additionally, you should showcase your passion for business and hospitality in a clear and polished format. This doesn't apply just to the hotel school, but to all schools at Cornell. Include multiple reasons in your essay for why you belong at the school you're applying to. The concept of fit is really important at a school like Cornell. Due to the specialized nature of many of the programs on offer at the university, Cornell tries very hard to make sure that each student is a perfect fit for the program they've selected. One of the best ways to demonstrate fit is through your application's theme. This is a central thread that runs through all components of your application, including academics, extracurriculars, and essays. My admissions theme was focused around my passion for hospitality and business leadership, as evidenced by my extracurricular activities and my previous work experience in the hospitality industry. My personal statement focused on the management of the school store, while my hotel school supplement included everything else. Together, they strengthened my application and painted a very clear picture of who I am and what's important to me. At CollegeVine, we are dedicated to helping students like you have a successful college applications experience. Whether you're aiming for the Ivy League or a state school, we're here to help. If you'd like to learn more about how our programs help students and their families navigate the college applications process, visit the link below for more information.